Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the Mobius strip. If you search Mobius strip on YouTube, you'll find lots and lots of people doing this trick where you put a rectangular piece of paper in a loop but making a half turn before joining. And then you draw a line on this piece of paper and ta-da, you can do it for the entire length without lifting the pen. Amazing, isn't it? But how is this possible? The Mobius strip is sometimes called the impossible shape because it only has one side and one edge. And there are so many interesting videos that explains why the Mobius strip is so special. So I'll link some of those down below. But for today's video, I just want to show you how to make it with code. To help us with that, first, let's review the equation for a donut or a torus. I'm going to start by drawing a circle using equations that turn from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So how about we first declare the radius r equals to 150. Then the two equations are x equals to r times cosine of angle, which I'm going to call theta. And y equals to r times sine of theta. All right, and then we're going to use the angle theta that goes from zero to 360. So I'm going to use a for loop that goes from theta equals to zero to theta less than 360. Theta plus plus. Then I'm going to put this inside here. And then we're going to draw the circle using a function called vertex, which draws out the points and we're going to input in the two arguments which are the points x and y and if I click run now nothing happens because with the vertex function you need two additional functions which are begin shape and end shape and it does exactly what the names suggest which begins the shape and end the shapes using the vertex points here let's run all right so we also need to put in a third argument here in the create canvas function to change from the default 2D rendering mode to a 3D mode, WebGL. And the second thing is that you see that it's so super dark here, and that is because we're drawing from theta equal to zero to theta less than 360, but in the radiance mode, which goes from zero to two pi, which is 6.28, right? So we also need to change the angle mode because we're using degree to degrees. All right, so now we only go one loop. Let me just put in no fill here. What we want to do is that we want to draw a donut, right? A donut is composed of this skeleton here, which is the shape of a donut. And then we need smaller circles that goes around this skeleton here, which gives it the meat or the fluffiness. So how about we call this one R1 and then we set another one called R2. How about we set that to 20? So this radius here will be the radius that is the radius of a circle that is going around this skeleton here. So what we need to do is that instead of just R1 here, the equation will be R1 plus R2 of cosine of phi. So it's not off theta, it's off a different angle because we need to go through the loop here, right? So. We're going to just copy this for the y side as well. And then we need a nested for loop that goes from phi equals to zero to phi less than 360. And then phi plus plus. And I'm going to put this inside here. Let's click run. All right, so you can see that actually how about we change this to 10? And I'm going to also add a new function called orbit control, which allows us to move the shapes around using our mouse. All right, so I'm also going to change from these lines to points. As you can see here, there's no meat just yet. So we need the z direction and the equation is let z equals to, so we get our cosine of phi here already. So we just need r2 of sine of phi to complete a circle. And don't forget to put the third argument into the vertex function. Then now we have a donut. Perfect. How is this relevant to an equation of 
the Mobius strip. Instead of having two variables, phi and theta, as a function of x, y, and z, I'm going to replace it with just theta. So theta here, theta here, and theta here. And with this, we only need this one for loop. We don't need both anymore. Let's see what happens. How about we also set the stroke weight to three to be thicker and let's set the stroke color to be red. All we have now is that we have a curve and this curve still is on the same surface of the donut but instead of having all of these circles that makes up the smaller circles in the donut shape we have all the points concentrated into one point where phi previously was equals to theta and if you look here the curve goes around the big circle one time and if we rotate it 90 degrees in the x direction it also goes around the smaller circle one time. And you can see if you also rotate it, the y axis here. Okay, I'm also going to draw an ellipse at the starting point so that you can see. So the starting point is when theta equals to zero, which gives x equals to r1 plus r2, and then y equals to zero. Then I'm going to give a radius of three a diameter of three and then I'm going to give it a stroke of how about a blue color and then we don't need this oh not in here it's in the ellipse function okay so that's the starting point and we can play around with this curve by multiplying a constant to the smaller circles, which are these ones with the R2 as the radius, and to the big circles, which are the ones that we multiply these whole thing to. So let's do that. I'm going to declare the variable called, how about big, set it to one, and then small, also set it to one, and I'm going to multiply the small variable to this, these three here, small, and then for the big circle, we we'll multiply it inside here. All right, so let's play around with these two variables. So if I change from one to two, how about we set this to, all right, you can see that it goes around the big circle two times. So the constant that is multiplied to the angle inside the big circle dictates how many revolutions goes around the big circle, right? So it goes around the big circle two times when it only goes around the small circle one time. And you can increase this to four, five, and that's just the number of times that it goes around the big circle. How about the small one? So now the small one does exactly the same things. Now it goes around the smaller circle two times, right? So if we do six, now it goes around the smaller circle six times and you can change this to three to six but it's a ratio essentially so now you can see that it goes around the big circle three times while it goes around the smaller circle six times but it seems like it just goes around the big circle one time with the smaller circle two times but how is this relevant to the Mobius strip equation? So if you remember the trick that I show you at the beginning, it is when you put a strip of paper together with a half twist, right? Which means that in one revolution of a big circle, you want the smaller circle to go only half a turn, so 0 0.5. So you can see here, it goes around the big circle one time, but it only goes around the smaller circle half a time, right? So how about we rotate it in the x direction you can see that it only goes down to here now we want to draw one more of this loop but starting from this point here so how can we do that what we can do is that we can basically use the same equation here but instead of starting it at angle equals to small times theta we need to give it a starting angle so it is giving an error right now because i'm redeclaring x and y so how about i will delete all of this 
and then just declare it once outside of the for loop. So let's do that x, y, and z. Okay, and then now I'm going to declare a new variable called starting angle. Let's set it to 10, and then I'm going to put it here, starting angle plus, starting angle plus, and starting angle plus here. Because we want to start the loop on the smaller circle at a different angle. So if I click run now, you can see that it's a much thicker line. That is because we're drawing two loops. So let me comment this one out. Just notice here where the blue circle is. Because we're starting at angle equals to 10, you can see that it is shifted out by 10 degrees. But if I do 100, you can see that instead of starting where the blue circle is, now it is over here. And if I do, let's say 200, it goes all the way to here. So where should be our starting angle? We want to start the angle at where the half turn in the first one ends, right? So it is at 180. And if we rotate it by x degree, so you can see that it is at the point where the first half turn ends. And then now we can just comment out this. And now you have what? The Mobius strip, right? That's pretty cool, huh? How about we comment out the donut first? And then instead of giving it plus plus here, let's do by 10. And then I'm going to do no fill. Then it's at the begin shape. We can choose to put in an argument of how we want the shape to be drawn. And for this case, I want it to be drawn as a quad strip. Okay. So now you have the Mobius strip and then you can play around with the radius here. Increase the radius and you get a bigger area. And how about we just do 100 by 100? There you go. Before I end this video, I want to prove again that the Mobius strip has one side and one edge. And we can do that by drawing a sphere on the edge of this shape. How about we start by, I'm going to delete this ellipse here. And then I'm going to write a conditional statement that says, if angle is less than 180, then I want to draw the sphere at this location. Else, I want to draw the sphere at this location here. And we need to tweak these a little bit. So first, let's declare new variables called x2, y2, and z2. Then I'm going to change all of these to the new variables. And then we're going to put angle inside here instead of theta for all of these. And then let's declare a new variable called angle and set it equals to zero. Then to draw a sphere, what we need is that we need to use a function called sphere and sphere can take in the dimension of a sphere. So how about we draw it at a size of 10. And because of this, we cannot actually give it the x and y or z coordinate of where we want the sphere to be. But what we can do is that we can use a translate function. And then we can provide the arguments of x2, y2, and z2, which are the locations calculated here. And because we're using a transformation function, specifically translate, we need to think about whether we want to use the functions called push and pop or not, which saves the transformation and then returns it back to the original setting before calling the transformation again, which is exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to put push here and then pop here. And then let's click run. All right, so now it is a little bit big. So I'm going to set R2 to be close to 50. And before we move the sphere, I want to change the aesthetics of this strip a little bit. So let's delete the no fill and then comment out these two. Then I want to actually fill in the strip, the half of the strip to be the color red. And then the other half, let's do blue let's see what the color looks like Ooh, that looks like a nice gradient perfect now i'm going to move the sphere and i'm going to do it using the 
angle plus and equals to 1. So we're going to increment the angle by 1. Let's run. Ooh, okay, starting angle is not defined because it's inside here. So we can just put starting angle outside of this loop. Seems like it jumped, but actually it didn't. Let's just look again. It went from one side to the other. I mean, there's only one side and there's only one edge, but it went from this edge all the way here and goes around again. How neat is that? So I think that this shape is just so interesting. So I hope that this video helps you understand how the Mobis strip shape works a little bit better. Give this one a try.